We are back at Dana Point, my man. How are you? Doing great, thanks. Pleasure to be here with you, Joe. This is yours and mine every, every same time next year. Yeah, it's a good little reunion every year this is, here at Life Science. Now this is your neck of the woods, right? I live here, yes. I live about 10 minutes down the road in San Clemente. Yeah, so it's gorgeous. very fortunate, beautiful area. So tell me about the new uh, game you got going on. So uh, over the past year, uh, decided to start a new company called Bright Euro. And we're on a mission to unlock new data streams and revolutionize diagnostic testing uh, with devices for lower urinary tract conditions and urologists. Mm. So what does the device look like? What is the full chain of the, the service look like? So we're licensing technology from a major institution that's been developing this for, for over a decade now. Mm -hmm. And the device itself is a miniature sensor that can be inserted transurethrally into the bladder. And then it can stay in the bladder for a period of time and record relevant metrics like pressure, volume, and other modalities to enable clinicians uh, to make treatment decisions regarding that patient's health. And so, to put it in layman terms, we have a miniature device that can go in the bladder. It collects data while the patient can stand, walk around, move, that will inform a clinician and help them understand exactly what's going on with their body and quantifiable metrics for conditions like overactive bladder, stress urinary incontinence, uh, benign prostate hyperplasia, or BPH, uh, and other neurological conditions. So with one device, we're able to help support a variety of conditions, really anything that's going on with the lower urinary tract. And, and the current standard of care, current standard diagnostics in that is you go into your urologist or your clinician's office, right? And in a very controlled environment, right? Fill up the bladder. Yeah. Yeah, the test right now is very terrible. So it's, it's well-intentioned, but due to the limitations of technology, it's a fundamentally flawed physiological evaluation. And so because the test, the equipment used to, currently the equipment used to conduct this test is very expensive. It can cost anywhere between fifty dollars to $100,000 in CapEx, not including the disposable cost for that evaluation. There's a centralization of care. And large urology practices may only have one of these machines with one trained operator in a large room. And then what they do, they schedule that patient to come back for this evaluation. They have to insert one, maybe two catheters, one in the bladder, and then oftentimes one in the rectum or vagina for intra-abdominal pressure. They artificially drain the bladder and then fill it at a rate that's much faster than physiologic filling so that they can try to evaluate the relationship of pressure and volume in the bladder, uh, which will help inform them or, or confirm some of the symptoms that that patient may have, may have described, which prescribed, led to them undergoing that evaluation. And so what we see is there's a limitation of the technology and then because of the reimbursement, there's a limitation of the time. So the, the time that it takes is really only, clinicians may only have 20 minutes to do this whole evaluation with that patient because they have to cycle through the one room uh, and it's currently only reimbursed roughly for an hour total of clinician and, and provider time. Uh, and so they have to make do with what they have. Mm -hmm. But because of that limitation, it's a fundamentally flawed evaluation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping to, to do is to remove the limitations of technology with our device and enable these other methods of use for prolonged monitoring, ambulatory monitoring, and extended monitoring uh, are just a few of the things that our device could support with the hopes of not just unlocking a, a truly physiologic data stream, but then mining that data stream using AI, machine learning through a central repository uh, to find insights that, that have never before been attainable. Mm. And that's what really is compelling. And you're doing about. the test in a real life environment. So they're vertical, they're walking around, they're sitting down, they're laughing, they're going yeah. to the bathroom, they're doing all kinds of things. So the data you're getting, the fidelity signal's gotta be a lot more pure. That's what our initial studies show. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be published soon. So it's, it's still very early, but incredibly promising. And so a uh, first in human study was conducted uh, with 11 patients and, and the publication is still, still pending. Mm. So we're excited for that to come out and, and show the world uh, what we saw with this, this cohort of patients and then to continue to, to study it even further and generate more evidence to support that. But the point you brought up is, is incredibly relevant, which is you undergo this evaluation, this invasive, you know, very personal, intimate evaluation with clinicians laying on the table, tubes hanging out of your body, they're asking you to urinate in front of them. Uh, almost half of the time, 
it fails to replicate the symptoms that the patient complained about that brought them in there. And that's a major issue. Uh, you know, there's false positives, there's false negatives, and this is a test which is designed to provide data that clinicians are supposed to rely on when they're deciding what treatment the, the patient should receive. And so we're hopeful and highly optimistic that our device will unlock a fundamentally different, uh, more physiologic form of data, and that it will fundamentally change the standard of care. Mm. You're building out the company, I know, and so for the people watching this, what is the opportunity to go to work with you over the next year look like? Sales, marketing, Clin, R&D, share that with our viewers. We're, uh, we have one remaining input, which will determine how quickly we can get to market, and so we're engaging the FDA, we'll have a meeting with them next month. The output of that meeting, the pre-submission meeting that we're doing with them will determine uh, the time to market here in the US, and, uh, and then obviously shortly thereafter abroad. But what we're doing right now, uh, we've just hired our initial you know, founding team, uh, mostly R&D focused, but very rapidly we'll be turning to other areas of the business like sales, marketing, commercialization. So uh, likely early next year, we'll be starting to, to round that out as we look to secure uh, a series B to support commercialization efforts. Um, you know, I believe I have complete confidence and, and faith that this can be a billion dollar company and we have the investors and support and the backing from, from people that believe that as well. And uh, because of that, you know, we're, we're poised for a period of rapid growth over the next two to three years. Awesome. And you, you're running a virtual company right now, for the most part, right? Even though uh, you've got the No, we have a physical here, office, right? yeah. Well, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so we have four employees as of today, um, all here in Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're leveraging consultants and, and product development support, uh, manufacturing, all of that's, that's outsourced. And, in other areas, so uh, right now we have a lot of uh, mechanical engineering and manufacturing going on, operational activity in Minnesota, uh, and then a lot of our electrical engineering, software engineering, uh, and some industrial designs with the firm out in North Carolina. Right. So if, if you're interested, if you're in Euro, your sales, your marketing, market development, clinical support, any of that, you need to reach out to Derek. I would say one of the baddest ass leaders in our industry. Uh, and just do some homework on Derek. If, if you're wondering about going to work for a, a good CEO leader, strongly recommend that. And uh, thanks for sharing the Bright Euro story with us today. You're too kind. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Just spitting the truth, my friend. Truly appreciate it. You got yeah. it. Thank you. I'm Joe Mullings, LSI 2022. Be well.